Hi there and welcome to lesson 8, our final, final lesson in our P6 topic, uh, all about electricity for gadgets and today we're going to be looking at charging um, and this is specifically looking at changing the charge going through a circuit. Uh, we're going to be looking at diodes and how a diode works and how we can convert an AC charge or an AC current into a DC current. Anyway, I'll see you at the end. Bye-bye. So let's have a look at our objectives for today's lesson on charging. So by the end of this lesson, you should know and understand how electricity can be stored and released in electrical systems with, with the use of diodes. OK, so let's have a look at what a diode actually is. This is the symbol for a diode, and then this is the... Uh, what an electrical appliance might look like um, for a diode. So this is what you might see in a circuit board, and then this is the electrical or the uh, symbol for a diode. Now we're going to have a have a look at how the actual diode works. Now what happens when you have a electricity running through a diode? You have two things: you have the voltage and the current. Now this graph will show you what happens when you change the voltage as to what happens to the current. So here we've got a negative voltage and a positive voltage. Now that would suggest in a normal system we'd have something that looks like that. So as we were uh, increasing the voltage either in a negative way or in a positive way the current would go up however in a diode there is no current when there is a negative voltage so if there is the voltage is negative it would be no current yet as you increase the voltage in a positive direction it would end up becoming positive Now a diode is made up of a semiconductor. Now it's two semiconductors known as an n-type semiconductor and a p-type semiconductor. Now in the middle of the or the join of the two semiconductors is something known as the depletion layer. Now it's known as the depletion layer because of the materials in the n-type semiconductor and in the p-type semiconductor. Now, the red dots with the positives are positive ions, and the black dots here are electrons, so these are the charge carriers. Now, here we have the blue dots with the negatives in. These are negative ions, and then these are holes where electrons used to be. So, in all intents and purposes, it's a positive charge. Now, the depletion layer is known as the depletion layer because if electrons move into it, they are repelled by the negative electrons. Sorry, the negative ions. And if the holes were to move into the depletion layer, they would be repelled by the positive ions on the n-type side. So electrons repelled by the negative ions, holes are repelled by the positive ions. So this means that the depletion layer behaves like an insulator. So if the n-type semiconductor is connected to a positive terminal, the current carriers, i.e. the electrons, are attracted away from the depletion layer. So the electrons move in that direction. Now this means that the depletion layer gets bigger. This is known as a reverse bias. Now if we were to connect the positive terminal to the p-type semiconductor, then the charge carriers are driven towards the depletion layer. This makes the depletion layer a lot smaller. Now this is known as forward bias. So let's summarise. Positive terminal at this end, depletion layer gets bigger. Positive terminal at this end, the depletion layer gets smaller. Now if we were to increase the voltage going through 
as we've got this positive bias or the forward bias here, the depletion layer gets narrower, narrower and narrower and narrower until the current can pass through. So the forward bias, the depletion layer gets smaller until the current can actually pass through. And that's why you get an increase in current as you turn that positive voltage up higher. Now it's able to pass through because as the depletion layer decreases, the holes here, which are effectively an absence of electrons, meet up with the electrons and that allows the current to pass through the wire. Now with any voltage, what you normally find is that you have an increase and a decrease over time. So it keeps going from positive to negative to positive to negative. Now when you have a diode in the circuit, so when you have a diode in the circuit, you only have a voltage going through like this because the other voltage is is causing no current to go through the, the circuit. This is what's known as half wave rectification. Now, ideally, you want to try and improve this so we can get a full wave rectification. And what we're going to do is look at how we can do this. Now, how we can do this is with a setup similar to this. Now, here we've got a AC input. So we've got the AC input, meaning that we have that half wave rectification. So we have this appearance, whereas we want an appearance like this. So you can either have a current going in to A or into C at this point here. However, you always want the current to be coming in this way and out this way through the DC input. So what you need to do is you need to uh, put the diodes in this position. So when you have the current coming into here, it can go up and out through there and then back in and out through here. However, when the current is coming in through this direction, you want it to go up into here and then out through this direction. So let's have a look at the two methods. So the first one is where we have our AC input here. We go up to C, it goes through the diode. It can't go in this direction because it won't allow the current to move in that direction, but it will pass through here. It will then leave the system, come to D and go out through uh, this section here. Now in the reverse, we have it going into here, up and out, and then it comes back through to D to C and to back out here. So this means we end up with the graph that we... So we've got a graph that looks something like this. However, it's not entirely perfect. So just to recap then, as we have the uh, current coming in this direction, from the AC generator, it goes through diode A to B and then into the positive terminal of the DC output and then back through C to D and then back out through here. And then alternatively with the, uh, the next flow of the AC generator, we go into C up to B and then out through here into our um, DC output and then back through to D to A and then back out here. So we get that AC input giving you a direct current out. So how does a capacitor work within the diode system with the bridging diodes that we've just had a look at? Well, let's have a look at a capacitor within a circuit. Now, the capacitor goes in here between the DC output. Now, when we have our input coming in here, what the capacitor will do is it will charge up, so it will gain a charge <coughs> from the current going through here. Now when the current comes out this way, it can actually um, produce a current coming through, so there is a, almost a continuous flow of 
electricity through this direction. So what does that mean for the half wave rectification? So let, let's have a look. So this is what it would look like without the capacitor. So we have a continuous um, current. Now here we have the same thing however this is where the capacitor is charging and then this is where it's discharging charging and discharging charging and discharging so eventually we have a continuous flow of electricity. Okay so that concludes our final lesson and our P6 topic on charging. Uh, where we've been looking at diodes and we've been looking at how we have the direction of the current flowing through the diode will affect whether you get an output for it or not um, and that to do with the depletion layer so where you have the the N and the P junction it can either get bigger or it can get small enough that the electrons and the holes can actually fill um, we then looked at how the diodes work in the bridging uh, bridging circuit. Now you do need to be able to draw uh, that bridging circuit, and it does does come up in in exams. So make make sure you're aware of that. And um, yeah, just how we get the uh, smoothing off with the charge the charges in the capacitor, so that you get that continuous flow of electricity rather than having the half wave rectification or the two half wave rectifications. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.